Shalom. Giving all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachachachwarash. Double honors to the apostles, the bishops, the elders of Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations as always to the elect. And I wanted to get into the understanding of Exodus 6 and 3, and we'll read it here. And I appeared, all right, who? You know, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, whose Hebrew name is Yahweh, all right? So it says, I appeared unto Abraham and unto Isaac and unto Jacob by the name of God Almighty. But by my name, Yahweh, was I not known unto them. All right. And this could be very confusing. You know, um, as you go throughout the story, we see that, you know, Abram, you know, called on the name of the Lord, built altar to the name of the Lord. I already know Isaac called on the name of the Lord. Jacob called on the name of the Lord. All right. But there is instances where the Lord came to them. All right. By the name of God Almighty, which will show you. All right. Is Allah Shadia, which is a title that he was known by. All right. In these days. All right. Now, the reason I'm doing this video is because a clip was sent to me. All right. Of these uh, reprobates who are enticing you to call on the names of. Of other gods basically saying all right the name Yahweh and Yahweh Shai are just the earthly names all right and ultimately we're not speaking the language that Adam was speaking Adam all right was given the hev heavenly name and pretty much after the Tower of Babel all right that language and understanding was taken out of the earth which we did a lesson showing you that that's not the case all right but we have to deal with this as well all right, because men and their deception are waxing worse. And we also know that, all right, when you read these scriptures in the English, it could come off to say one thing, but, all right, the teacher ultimately has to go, all right, into the Hebrew, all right, into the Greek and make understanding of these things. As a matter of fact, let's get the prologue to Sirach, and I'll just jump right to the point, okay? Um... You know, one of our forefathers who was in the Greek captivity, you know, uh, translated, you know, uh, a book that his grandfather wrote. Um, and we'll read it here. And that's where we get the book of Sirach. But right here, I just get to the point. It says for the same things uttered in Hebrew. All right. And translated into another tongue. All right. See, the Hebrew was around. All right. Here. In the Greek captivity, it's always been around. Okay, there was a point, all right, where it was without fruit, all right, but it has always been in the earth, all right, and the Hebrew language was not dispelled at the Tower of Babel. Okay, there was just different dialects of Hebrew to where the Lord ultimately made it to where they didn't understand each other, all right, but the Lord's pure language that has been returned unto us in these latter days which is the language of the heavens all right was never dispelled it was never obliterated out of the earth okay and ultimately as we showed you the name adam called on the name that eve called on the name that ultimately was passed down through the lineage of the sons of god was yahweh all right and what these individuals are uh, basically uh telling you is that ultimately here Adam didn't call on the name Yahweh. Yahweh was just put into the scriptures, all right, because Moses was given that name in Exodus, all right, the third chapter, which we know Moses wrote, all right, the Torah, all right, the first five books. So they're saying basically Moses put Yahweh there, all right, in Genesis, the fourth chapter, where it says, then begin men to call on the name of the Lord. But ultimately they were calling on a different name which pretty much they're saying is the name God Almighty. But we'll show you that that's complete madness, all right? And any of you individuals who are going around calling and you've been enticed to call on these weird Gnostic names, all right, which they're calling on these names saying that they're heavenly names, but at the same time they're using Baha Shem, which is in their, uh, you know, understanding earthly hebrew the earthly language see but they've received the heavenly names which have been in gnostic writings and books 
all right, <laughs> forever, right? And then just pop up when you woke up and so-called received it. No, they've been in those writings, all right? But at the same time, you're saying Baha Shem. So you're calling on the names of those false idols. Then you say Baha Shem, which is in the name. Why don't you call on the whole thing in that earthly or that heavenly language? Anyway, we'll get to the understanding of the argument and what they're actually saying and break this down. But uh, the point is here for the same things uttered in Hebrew and translated into another tongue have not the same force in them. All right. When they're translated into another tongue, they have not the same force. And not only these things, but the law itself, you know, the Torah and the prophets and the rest of the books have no small difference when they are spoken in their own language. All right. So reading this on face value, it would seem as though Abraham, Isaac and Jacob did not know the name Yahweh. All right. So we're going to get understanding of this. All right. Because clearly they knew the name of Yahweh. All right. As we um, have record. All right. Of Abram here in Genesis 12 and seven. And the Lord appeared unto Abram and said unto uh, him, thy, unto thy seed will I give this land. And there he, Abram, built an altar unto Yahweh who appeared unto him. OK, so the, that that's one. All right. And then you keep reading. And he removed from thence unto a mountain on the east of Bethel and pitched his tent, having Bethel on the west, high on the east. And he built an altar unto Yahweh and called upon the name Yahweh. OK, so basically what they're saying is that this is really not what Abraham was calling upon. Based upon that scripture and ultimately Moses put Yahweh here. But Abram was really calling on. All right. The heavenly name. All right. Which the heavenly name is Yahweh. All right. And the name that was given on earth starting with Adam is Yahweh. OK. So we see clearly here. Abraham built an altar and called on the name of the Lord. Even in the next chapter in Genesis 13 and 4. And unto the place of the altar which he had made there at first and there Abram called on the name of Yahweh. All right. And ultimately Moses was given this history. All right. As he went up on the mount for 40 days and 40 nights. OK. And he wrote these things down. This is how we have the Torah. All right. Because the Lord gave him this history as he's ultimately receiving this history. He's having he's writing it down. All right. And the Lord told him via his angel that hovered over the mountain, the angel of the Lord, all right, that Abram called on the name of the Lord. So when you read, all right, here, okay, what does this mean? Exodus 6 and 3, and I appeared unto Abraham and unto Isaac and unto Jacob by the name of God Almighty, but by my name, Yahweh, was I not known unto them? All right, so we're going to give understanding on this. As a matter of fact, when you go here, all right, I appeared unto Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob by the name of God Almighty. This name, God Almighty, all right, as some say, El Shaddai, all right, well, we know El is Allah, okay, Allah, all right, power, all right, and Shaddai, all right, Shaddai, or Shadya, in the, in the Hebrew, it's Shadya, all right, Almighty, most powerful, the almighty God, when you go to the root word Shaddad, to deal violently with, okay? And when you go deeper and study, all right, it's known as a demon-like power, a devastating power, a, a, a power that deals violently. So Allah Shadya in the Hebrew basically means terrible, all right, demon-like, all right, almighty, violent power, however you want to say it. Allah Shadya, all right, and I appeared, okay, unto Abraham and unto Isaac and unto Jacob by the name, all right, of Allah Shadya, okay, which ultimately that is one of his many titles. He was known as uh, um, El Shaddai or Allah Shadya, okay, through these generations, all right, but his name Yahweh was always there all right as we showed you 
from Genesis, the second chapter. Okay. Let me just type it in. Okay. According to the records, this name was in the earth and spoken. Okay. In Genesis, the second chapter as Adam. All right. Was what? The breath of life was breathed unto him and the apostle Tahar. And the apostles went into this weekend how the word breath itself, all right, ties to the name Yahweh, all right? Yahweh, you're literally breathing, all right, when you say the name. Life is in that name. He exists. He is, okay? So that word Yahweh did not just pop up at the time of Moses, all right? So what does this mean? All right, well, first off, all right, and we'll break it all down. But by my name, Yahweh, was I not known unto them? All right. So let's go to this word known. This is the importance of going into the original language as we just read. Right. The word known. All right. Is yet you die. All right. You die to know, to learn, to perceive to find out and discern, discern, to distinguish, to know by experience. See that? To recognize, admit, acknowledge, confess, consider, to be acquainted with, to know personally, to know, to be skillful in, to have knowledge, all right, to be instructed, all right, to be known, all right, acquaintance. And as you go down, you know, into the uh, Strong's definition, you know, recognition, instruction, awares, to be diligent, to discover, discern, and do with familiar friend, famous, feel, to have knowledge of. All right. So ultimately, all right, what this is saying is that there was a point, all right, when the Lord came to Abraham, all right, to Isaac and to Jacob, all right, where they were not well acquainted with. All right. When you read this in the uh, NIV, it gives the best understanding. All right. It says, and I appeared unto Abraham, to Isaac and to Jacob as God almighty. I'll shot you. All right. That's not speaking of some, you know, a uh, heavenly name. Nobody knew that Moses didn't write. No, he wrote that name that he was you know, known as at that time. And we'll show you other scriptures where he presented himself as Allah shot you. That was a name he was known by back then. See, but by my name, Yahweh, I did not make myself fully known to them. So this has two aspects. We know that Abraham, when uh, ultimately the Lord came to him, all right, that he was raised in a household where idols were worshipped. OK, this is Joshua 24 and two. And Joshua said unto all the people, thus said the Lord, all right, Yahweh, the God of Israel. All right. Your fathers dwelt on the other side of the flood. All right. In old time, even Terah, the father of Abraham and the father of Nahor, and they served other gods. See. So Abram or Abraham grew up in a household to where idols. All right. Were worshipped. Idols were served. All right. Now the, the Alishadja was known of. All right. But as far as a deep, intimate relationship with him. All right. There was a point where Abram didn't have that. All right. But we know that he received it and eventually passed it down. All right. Unto Isaac and Jacob. This is one way to look at it. All right. And I took your father, Abraham, from the other side of the flood and led him throughout all Canaan and multiplied his seed and gave him Isaac. OK. And I gave unto Isaac, Jacob and Esau and gave unto Esau, Mount Seir and so forth. All right. And then it talks about, you know, how to, you know, Egypt and everything else. Now, going back here, another way to look at this is ultimately from the perspective that as you read what's happening here, the most highest promising action, because remember, there was a promise made. All right. On to Abraham that was passed down to Isaac. And that was passed down unto Jacob. What is that promise? Let's get Genesis, the 15th chapter. OK, let's just get to the point. All right. 
let's see here. Verse 12, Genesis 15 and 12. And when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and lo, a horror of great darkness fell upon him. And he said unto Abram, Know for a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger as in a land that is not theirs. All right, which this is speaking of the Israelites in Egypt and shall serve them and they shall afflict them 400 years. See, and that nation whom they shall serve will I judge and afterward they shall come out with great substance. All right. And thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace and shall be buried in good old age. But in the fourth generation, they shall come hither again. For the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full, okay? Because the Amorites, Canaanites, and all of these other ites were in the Holy Land at this time. Now, you know, Abram, you know, uh, you know, Isaac, you know, they had certain relationships with these ites. But ultimately, as time went, all right, these ites, the Amorites and the Perizzites and so forth, they started doing so many abominations in the land that the Lord you know, uh, ultimately wanted to, he kicked them out. Let's get that in the book of Wisdom of Solomon, the 12th chapter. Okay. In the fourth generation, all right, which ultimately that will bring you um, to the time of Moses. Okay. To the time of Moses is where I'm going to bring your seed into this land that I promised. But let's get this precept real quick. Wisdom of Solomon, Salakia. Wisdom of Solomon, the 12th chapter. Okay, Wisdom of Solomon, the 12th chapter. 12 and 3. For it was thy will to destroy by the hands of our fathers, you know, Joshua, you know, Caleb, so forth, both those old inhabitants of thy holy land, whom thou hatest for doing the most odious works of witchcraft, and wicked sacrifices, also those merciless murders of children and devourers of men's flesh and feasts of blood with their priests out of the midst of their adulterous crew and the parents that killed all right, with their own hands, souls dest destitute of help. All right. That the land which thou esteemest above all others might receive a worthy colony of God's children. All right. Nevertheless, even those thou spared as men and didst send wasp, all right, uh, forerunners of thine host to destroy them little by little. So he didn't just spew them out of the land right away, but little by little he executed judgment upon them, all right, those because they were Canaanites, they were Hamites, all right, the curse of Canaan, you know, was fulfilled when we, you know, destroyed them out of the land and all of the stuff we did to them. But ultimately, the reason that this happened was that the children of Israel could possess that land, which here we're reading. It was promised. OK, let's go back to Genesis, the 15th chapter it was promised unto Abraham. OK, so as we keep reading. Verse 18, in the same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abraham, saying unto thy seed, have I given this land? All right. From the river of egypt to the great river euphrates all right the Canaanites, the Canaanites, the catamites the hittites the parasites the canaanites and so forth these were the nations that were inhabiting that land this is how we know this ain't talking about america all right this particular you know uh this particular uh prophecy that was given unto abraham that his seed would be you know oppressed in a land that's not theirs which is egypt 400 years and then he's going to ultimately bring us out of that land all right and judge that nation that was prophesied unto abram right here in genesis the 15th chapter and as you keep reading all right the promise of this land was passed down to isaac okay all right um and then eventually we know jacob okay and here this is Genesis 17 and 1. And when Abram was 90 years old, the Lord appeared unto Abram and said unto him, I am almighty God. And when you look this name up, it's Yahweh who appeared unto him. All right. But again, he's known as what? Shadya, Allah Shadya. OK, so that was a, a title. All right. That the most high. All right. Was known as. But ultimately, his name is Yahweh, the name that we 
ultimately received all right from moses to pass down to all of the generations was said this is my name forever and that is the same name that adam received that is the same name that was called on okay all right by uh you know enoch you know before that seth enos noah shem okay that particular name all right continued all the way up and here in these times we're entering back into that legacy where we're calling on the name of the lord all right now going here to back to genesis the sixth chapter or exodus the sixth chapter okay as a matter of fact let's go to exodus the second chapter all right because the lord says something that's very important to what we're getting ready to break down this is exodus 2 okay and 23 and it came to pass in the process of time that the king of egypt died and the children of Israel sighed by reason of bondage, and they cried, and their cry came up unto God by reason of bondage. And God heard their groaning and remembered his covenant with Abraham and with Isaac and with Jacob. And God looked upon the children of Israel and had respect unto them. All right. So ultimately, this is that time where this ultimate promise to Abraham that was passed down to Isaac and Jacob of this land would be fulfilled all right which we know that wasn't a fulfillment of it all right but this would this is the time where he's getting ready to ultimately set them up all right with a leader the leadership to to lead them into the promised land right so let's go back to Exodus the uh, sixth chapter one second here Salakia. All right, Exodus the sixth chapter. All right, so God promises action. All right, so let's read verse one. Then Yahweh said unto Moses, Now shalt thou see what I will do to Pharaoh with a strong hand. All right, he shall let them go, and with a strong hand he shall drive them out of his hand. All right, and God spake unto Moses and said unto him, I am Yahweh. And I appeared unto Abraham and unto Isaac, all right, and Jacob by the name of Alashadjah, but by my name Yahweh was I not well known unto them, because ultimately they received the promise, all right, as a, a prophecy. As a matter of fact, what does that say in the book of uh, Afar Off? I believe that's in the book of uh, Hebrews, the 11th chapter. Okay, Hebrews, the 11th chapter. Okay, the promises were far off. Okay, as he's talking about, you know, Abraham, Isaac, you know, Jacob, you know, Sarah. All right. Hebrews 11 and 8. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should receive for an inheritance, obeyed. He did that by faith. OK, even though he wasn't well acquainted with the power of Yahweh. All right. Because ultimately, again, he was restored to the legacy that goes back to Adam through Seth. Ultimately, when he grew up. All right. The sons of God, his father, you know, they were all idol worshipers at that time. But the Lord reestablished the understanding and everything that we needed through Abram. So by faith, when Abraham, when he was called to go into a place which he should receive for an inheritance, obeyed and went out not knowing whether he went. OK, he just believed by faith. He sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country dwelling in the tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob heirs. All right. With him of the same promise. OK, for he looked for a city which had foundations whose builder and maker is God. All right. Yahweh. OK, and as you keep reading, it's going through that now. See here, verse 11 says these all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off and were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims. On the earth for they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. Now, let's read verse 11 in the uh, NLT. 
It says, all these people died believing what God had promised them. They did not receive what was promised, but they saw it all from a distance and welcomed it. They agreed that they were foreigners and nomads on the earth. All right. Uh, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. All right. They all knew of the promise, which it was the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, Yahweh, that gave them that promise. All right. Now, going back to uh, Exodus all right, six and three here in this chapter, the most high is getting ready to make do on that promise of, you know, the uh, children of Israel being afflicted, you know, which ultimately Abraham, Isaac and Jacob heard of those promises. All right. But the action of seeing Yahweh bring them forth. All right. That will be done through the time of Moses. OK, so Exodus. All right. Six and one, then the Lord said unto Moses, Now shall thou see what I will do unto Pharaoh, which is a fulfillment, all right, of what we read here, all right, in Genesis the fifteenth chapter, all right, is that your your people, you know, Abram's people, will be strangers in a land that was not theirs, and shall be afflicted four hundred years, but the nation whom they would serve would be judged. And they will come out with great substance. And that was all fulfilled in this story, the Exodus. So here in Exodus 6 and 1, all right, the Lord is telling Moses, watch what I'm getting ready to do to him. For with the strong hand, which is that angel, Yahweh Shai, shall he let them go. All right. And with the strong hand, shall he drive them out of his land, which that was ultimately the promise in the first place. All right. It's just that when Abraham received it, all right. That wasn't the time for it to happen. All right. They hadn't seen ultimately the hand of the Lord drive out these heathen and, and, and they hadn't the, the Israelites hadn't been oppressed, you know, that 400 years in Egypt. All right. That's all being fulfilled here. All right. And the Lord God spake unto Moses and said unto him, I am Yahweh. And I appeared unto Abraham and unto Isaac and to Jacob by the name of God Almighty, Alashadja. But by my name, Yahweh, was I not what? Well acquainted to them. It wasn't fully made manifest in a sense of the promise being fulfilled. And in a sense that what? Abraham, all right, when he first received, you know, all of the, the promises in the name of the Lord, you know, he had came out of a situation where he was raised as an idol worshiper by his father. But the Lord separated him from that. Verse four, and I have also established my covenant with them. To give them the land of Canaan and the land of the uh, and the land of their pilgrimage where they were strangers. Boom. OK. And and I have also heard the groaning of the children of Israel, whom the Egyptians keep in bondage. And I have remembered my covenant. Wherefore, say unto the children of Israel, I am Yahweh. All right. <laughs> and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians and I will rid you out of their bondage. And I will redeem you with the stretched out arm and great judgments. All right. And as the Lord said with Moses, he dealt face to face. Let's get that. OK. He dealt face to face with him, not in a literal sense, but he opened himself up. All right. To Moses in a way that he hadn't opened himself up. All right. To any of our other fathers. OK. Let's see here. Yep, Exodus 33 and 11. All right. And the Lord spake unto Moses face to face. All right. As a man speaketh to his friend. All right. Now, Abraham was known as the Lord's friend. All right. But the Lord didn't show Abraham, Isaac or Jacob any of these things that he's getting ready to show Moses. All right. With the angel coming and actually delivering the children of Israel. He didn't show those things. To Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, but it was promised to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. All right. They only knew of it by promise. All right. Which we just read that in the book of Hebrews. All right. The uh, 11th chapter. They all died knowing about it as a promise. All right. The, but, but the fulfillment of it. All right. Came. All right. With the Lord doing it at the time of Moses. OK. As he told Abraham in the fourth generation. Your children are going to come into this land that I promised. OK. To establish this covenant. OK. 
which ultimately, <laughs> you know, we received, okay, to enter into the promised land, all right? So ultimately, Exodus 6 and 6, Wherefore say unto the children of Israel, I am Yahweh, and I will bring you from under the burdens of the Egyptians, and I will rid you out of their bondage, and I will redeem you with a stretched out arm and with great judgments, and I will take you to me for a people, and I will be unto you a God, and ye shall know that I am Yahweh your God, which bringeth you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians, and I will bring you into the land concerning which I did swear and give it to Abraham and unto Isaac and unto Jacob, and I will give it to you for a heritage, for I am Yahweh. Okay? And um, even though our forefathers didn't fully get into the land, they broke the covenant, all right, that promise still stands, okay? And the true children of Israel, the remnant in these latter days, have been raised up to be heirs to that promise. And, Cho and Moses spake to the children of Israel, but they hearkened not unto Moses, and so forth. And you can keep reading, all right? So ultimately, the Lord is getting ready to make himself known in a sense where Moses and, and Aaron and the children of Israel are getting ready to experience the fulfillment of that very promise. All right. That was given unto Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. And we know that Isaac and Jacob knew the names as well. Um, let's see here. Let's see here. Where, where do I got it? Yep. You know, Genesis 25 and 21. And then Isaac entreated Yahweh for his wife because she was barren and Yahweh was entreated of him. All right. And Rebecca, his wife, conceived. All right. The Lord blessed Isaac. Genesis 27 and 20. And Isaac said unto his son, How is it that thou hast found all right, it so quickly, my son? And he said, Because Yahweh thy God brought it to me. So they knew the names. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, all right, knew the names. They heard the names. It was passed down. All right. I mean, you think Abraham built an altar to the name, called on a name, and didn't tell, all right, uh, uh, Isaac and Jacob? Of course they knew the names. What this is saying. And in, in Exodus, the uh, sixth chapter in the third verse, all right, is ultimately, all right, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob hadn't seen the fulfillment of those promises. OK, he didn't make himself. As a matter of fact, look up that word known one more time. All right. We went through these breakdowns, you know, before. And, and this dude, know, you know, a war knows this breakdown. But he's at a point where he has to, you know, pretty much throw out everything that he, he can you know, to, to stick to his pride in that doctrine. And you all are going to pay for that. We got a scripture for you, you all to end it off. This is the book. All right. Of, uh, this is the word, uh, to know you die. All right. To show. Okay. To know. All right. To, to have knowledge, to perceive. Okay. To have acquaintance. Again, Moses was acquainted with the most high in a way that, you know, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, all right, weren't acquainted with him, all right, in the sense that the promise that was passed down from Abraham through Isaac to Jacob, ultimately, they only knew it by promise, all right, but to perceive and see, to discern, to perceive, to, to actually know by experience, okay, to know by experience and to be acquainted with in a, in a sense of personal, did not the Lord say he spake unto Moses face to face? All right. In a, in a way that he didn't uh, deal with any other man. OK, as a man speaking to his friend. OK, well, Moses would be the one. All right. Where all of these things would be fulfilled. And he would grow in the knowledge and the Lord would be known unto him that he is true and real through the fulfillment of that promise. You see, because it's one thing to ultimately promise something. All right. But for it to actually come to pass, it's like, oh, my God. You know, so that's what that means, man. You know, I mean, we can go to various other scriptures. We know Abraham, Isaac and Jacob knew the names Yahweh. All right. Which the name Adam called on. OK, as we showed you in the last video. All right. And passed down to, to, to his wife and to the children that was Yahweh. it's the same thing basically what this guy is saying is that this name Yahweh, 
that Eve and Adam, you know, were calling on and that, you know, men were calling on at the time of Enos. That wasn't Yahweh. Moses just put that there. He just put Yahweh here. But ultimately, we're calling on a name none of us know. But ultimately, that name is Alishadia. All right. That is spoken of in the book of Exodus, the sixth chapter. It's Alishadia. It's not some, you know, uh, 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 you know, a gram of macaroni. Yeah, we're going to mock those names just like Elijah mocked the gods of Baal. Those gods have nothing to do with us. And as a matter of fact, and that's the breakdown. You know, the 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 uh, uh, Abr uh, Adam never called on no, you know, a, a gram of macaroni. Okay, all of those names are Gnostic gods. We've proven it. It came out of a book that already existed. It wasn't something that was revealed to you after you ate a wild leaf, all right, and and drunk some lily pad water, and you know, came to these great revelations after smoking a blunt. No, that that that's not true. OK, Satan is dealing with you and ultimately you, you and the men under you are going deep off the left end. OK, this is the book of uh, Deuteronomy 13 and one. We'll read this in the NLT and we'll close this out. I don't want to make this too much longer because we got breakdowns on this already. And those are just perspectives through the spirit, you know, of how you can look at that, you know, scripture, because reading it in the English verbatim, you'd be like, well, damn. So Abraham, Isaac, nor Jacob knew the name. Well, again, <laughs> you got particular camps like IUIC saying not even Moses knew the true name. Moses built an altar to the name. It was given unto him to say, this is my name forever in my memorial to all generations. It was the same name that was given in the past. The Hebrew means from the region beyond. The ancient, the east, the name that was given unto Adam eastward in Eden is the same name that has been passed down through all these generations. And we have what come back into that legacy in these times and received it. All right. Through the Lord returning to us a pure language. As a matter of fact, let's get that in the book of uh, Zephaniah. OK. The third chapter. OK. Zephaniah three. All right. And eight, therefore, wait ye upon me, saith the Lord, until the day that I rise up to the prey, for my determination is to gather the nations, that I may assemble the kingdoms to pour out upon them mine indignation, even my fierce anger, for all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. All right, so at the time where, you know, before he, you know, gathers all of these nations, all right, as is talked about in the book of Jeremiah 50, for then will I turn to the people a pure language. That they may call upon the name of Yahweh to serve him with one consent. All right. And that's happening now. The pure language has been returned to us as it is promised in the book of Isaiah, the 19th chapter. All right. And just because you're mad, disgruntled and you want to change and separate yourself, you know, uh, doesn't, you know, hey, you just going to have to be dealt with. This is Isaiah 19. All right. And this is speaking of this spiritual Egypt in 18. And that day show five cities. All right. And five represents power, a gathering, a remnant. OK. In the land of Egypt, speak the language of Canaan. What's the language of Canaan? Hebrew. OK. And swear to Yahweh. All right. The Lord of hosts. One shall be called the city of destruction. As a matter of fact, Isaiah 44 the scripture, you know, associated with our great awakening. OK, said that we will subscribe. The remnant would do what? You know, turn back to Yahweh. Remember themselves and think upon his name in the land of their captivities. OK, let this load real quick. So the, the, you guys are through and we're going to end it off. After we get this with the book of uh, Deuteronomy, the 13th chapter. Give me one second here. Here it goes. All right. Isaiah 44. And three, for I will pour water upon him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry grounds. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed and my blessing upon thine offspring. 
and they shall spring up as amongst the grass and as willows by the watercourses. One shall say, I am Yahawas. Another shall call himself by the name of Jacob, Yaquab, Israel. And another shall subscribe with his hand unto the Lord and surname himself by the name of Israel. Boom. So ultimately, we will turn back to our power, Yahweh, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. All right. Which that name, Yahweh, right, was in the earth before Abraham. All right. Came on the scene. But it was just what? Returned to him. Just like it's been returned to us in Babylon the Great. It was returned to Abram. All right. In Ur of the Chaldees, which was the physical landmass of Babel or Babylon, where all of these various other gods were worshipped. All right. So this is the book of Deuteronomy 13 and 1. Suppose, all right, there are prophets among you or those who dream dreams about the future and they promise you signs and miracles. We're going to, you know, heal people on camera. You know, we're healing people in this particular name. You don't you call on this name and, you know, do this and, you know, we, we can do that. And we make it, you know, uh, the wing stop up here without, you know, do we put the bag down and we say these names. We look in and there's more chicken, you know. And predict and the predicted signs of miracles occur if they say, come, let us worship other gods, gods you have not known before. You have not known a grandma macaroni or a bar of Mentos, which we showed you with a with a quick Google search. OK, that those names were already in the earth. They, they, those names weren't given unto them by some, you know, intervention where they never existed. No. That knowledge had already existed and it's left hand knowledge, left hand gods that we have not known before. Don't listen to them. All right. The Lord, your God is testing you to see if you truly love him with all your heart and soul. So a lot of you failed the test. Some of you there ain't that many people following, but you do got a few weirdos that's dabbling, dabbling into that. And them dudes with you are they're in captivity. That's why every statement, you know, a war makes. He looks at those guys to make sure that they're agreeing with him. OK. It says. The false prophets or visionaries who try to lead you astray must be put to death. They encourage rebellion against the Lord, your God. And this is nothing new who redeemed you from slavery and brought you out of the land of Egypt since they try to lead you astray from the uh, way Yahweh, your God, commanded you to live, you must put them to death. All right. In this way, you will purge the evil from among you. So, of course, we're not going to physically go and put these dudes to death or do anything, you know, to harm, you know, them. You know, but ultimately the, your demise is already set. You know, um, you're coming in the spirit of Hymenaeus. At the end of the day, this is a big joke. But we do have to deal with these things, you know, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Shai. Hopefully I edified. You know, I had other scriptures as well. You know, but the bottom line is that um, you know, ultimately the name is Yahweh, all right, Bahashem Yahweh Shai. All right, that's the heavenly language. And if you've received the heavenly language, say Bahashem or in the name in that heavenly language and stop playing. Shalom.